Now, today is International Women's Day and Parliament marking the occasion by hearing its first read-through of the long-awaited domestic abuse bill that was previously delayed when Boris Johnson prorogued Parliament last year. Now, the legislation has been broadly welcomed by women's rights campaigners and MPs alike. And one of those is the Labour MP for Canterbury, Rosie Duffield, whose story went viral last year after she shared her own experience of domestic abuse in the House of Commons. She's been speaking to Sophie Ridge. A rare break of cross-party unity on the week of International Women's Day, when the long-awaited domestic abuse bill was introduced to Parliament. Almost a third of women will have experienced domestic abuse, almost certainly someone that you know. It starts slowly, a few emotional knocks, alternated with the romantic gushes and promises of everlasting love. One of them is the MP for Canterbury, Rosie Duffield, who moved the House of Commons to tears last October when she spoke of her own experience. Months later, she welcomes the reintroduction of the bill. I think it protects um, women in the most vulnerable situations and strengthens the protections around them. So women who are homeless, I'm really hoping that that is a protection that's put in the bill. Um, women who are vulnerable financially. Um, I think it's just flagging up that women need that extra layer of care and protection if they are in a really vulnerable domestic violence situation. Do you think that sometimes with domestic abuse and domestic violence, there's some misconceptions yeah. about what can happen and also who it can happen to. Absolutely. I mentioned in my speech that it isn't just those soap opera families. It's not a particular class or a particular kind of person that's vulnerable to domestic violence or domestic abuse. First, people who haven't heard your speech, and obviously I want to be led by you on this, but what happened to you? Um, I ended up reuniting with someone just after the election that I'd had a really nice relationship with for a couple of years and he came back into my life saying, you know, I know you're the same person and I really want to support you. And when you're just propelled into the limelight without any kind of preparation, I didn't have a clue I was going to win or be an MP. That old familiar kind of thing was really appealing. Quite shortly after we moved in together, he was proposing and uh, I felt kind of safe and everything else around me was so kind of new and strange. Um, but it didn't take long for me to see a completely different side to him. Yeah. And what, what side was that then? Um, violent tempers, constant threats. He was going to leave if I disagreed with him. At the drop of a hat, he was going to go abroad. He was going to just leave. And I was thinking, hang on a minute, I hadn't done anything differently or wrong. Um, and it just stepped up. You just feel like you're on the verge of tears all the time. I'm not soft at all, actually. I appear like that, but I'm pretty tough. I've been a single mum for a long time. And he would just make me feel like I just wanted to cry every time I walked in the front door, which was ridiculous. And how do you feel now? Um, relieved, but still kind of not entirely over it, I have to be honest. And do you think there is a worry that, you know, sometimes domestic abuse hasn't been taken seriously enough. Yeah, I think it was seen as a kind of fringe thing. You know, stop it. <laughs> we're, we're telling men, just stop it. And it is mostly men. I know that, that men are also victims of this, but just everyone, there's no excuse. We're going to make it the law that, you know, you have no hiding place. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sophie Ridge, Sky News. Well, a reminder that ahead of the budget on Wednesday, you can see Rishi Sunak giving his first TV interview since he took office as Chancellor to Sophie Ridge on Sunday. That's at half past eight this morning. Well, staying with International Women's Day, the 2020 March for Women will take place in Parliament Square later today. Thousands of women will be calling for world leaders to take action on the climate emergency, which activists argue disproportionately affects women and girls. Well, we're joined by women's rights activist, Dr. Helen Pankhurst, the great-granddaughter of suffragette Emmeline and the singer and songwriter Ray. Good to see you both morning, this morning. morning. So, I mean, I always find it fascinating to talk to you, Helen, whenever you come on, because of obviously your lineage in all of this. Why do you, do you think in 2020 there is still a, a long way to go? Absolutely, there's a long way in so many ways. I mean, we have to celebrate. So this day is a day of celebration, looking back and saying we've achieved a lot. Uh, without doubt, those suffragettes and suffragists, if they were here today, they'd be saying progress economically, mm. politically, socially. However, on every single front, there's still so much to be done. And that's why I think every year International Women's Day focuses on, on a specific issue and says, come on, we can do more in that area. So why, why climate change this year? Why does climate change affect uh, women in, in a, <clears throat> a, a stronger way, perhaps, than men? Because 
Think about what climate change is. It's an emergency which affects a population. In that emergency, say it's um, drought. Uh, in poorer countries, women are particularly vulnerable. They're the ones that are going to collect water. They have to collect water from mm -hmm. a longer distance. Also, in times of crisis, communities are at their worst sometimes. So issues like violence against women tends to increase as a problem. Um, they are the receiving end in terms of being the ones that are looking after the vulnerable, the elderly, the disabled, the very young. They themselves might be pregnant. So there are all sorts of reasons why they are particularly vulnerable on the one hand. And then on the other hand, they don't have the power. They're not given the positions of authority. They're not in political spaces to change things. So what we're calling for is these young people who should be at the table, women who should be at the political table, for that all to change. And this is the Care International's um, march. We have many, many other partners involved in it. Um, and people can get on, uh, involved online as well as coming to the event today. Let's talk about this march. Um, it's happening later today, um, Parliament Square. Ray, um, why did you get involved with this? Well, I'm incredibly passionate about women. Um, I've spent maybe six or seven years of my life in the music industry and have experienced countless numbers of traumas. Some of my best friends, you know, even uprooting our whole lives due to incidents that women are faced with that people don't understand and anything I can be a part of to shed light on, to talk about, and also how we really need women behind the scenes in roles that aren't typically female, you know, in music videos, having women on the technical side of things, female engineers, female producers. There's a lot of work that we need to do. So anything I can do to try do, and... Do you think there is a change? We've seen this meter movement, of course, within um, the film industry. Do you think yeah. in the music industry, um, there is a change? There is on the surface, you know, and the conversations are starting and women, you know, two women, artists to artists, are being really encouraging. We're talking about it but there are still some bad people in jobs that they don't deserve to be in. And there's still a lot of work we have to do behind the scenes, if I'm honest. I'm always a bit fascinated when it comes to these women issues as a man. Mm. Because we had actually uh, Ricky Ross and Lorraine McIntosh from Deacon Blue on the show yesterday, and they were talking about the work they're doing with SCIAF in uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo mm. about women who've been uh, victims of sexual violence. Mm. And, and saying to them, and they agreed that, how, that it's as important to involve men in women's issues as it is women. Is that, would you agree with 100%, that? 100%, absolutely, more than 100% if you could do it. Mm. Um, you know, this is a problem in which both men and women have to engage. And it's not about the individual man. It's about the ideas, the entitlements, the traditions and all of that. So on these events, we very much encourage men at our sites. It's so pivotal, particularly young people, young men as well. Um, and in terms of the celebrities endorsing this and speaking and singing, you know, we've got uh, Ricky Wilson, um, who'll be singing. We've got uh, George McKay. We've got a lot of men in support. David Arnold has helped um, um, put together a lot of the musical element. So yes, men both visible and in support, you know, behind, marching together, critical. That's important then, Ray, I imagine with your audience as well. I mean, as you've got a, you know, a, a, grow, a big and growing audience listening to you. How do you get that sort of positive message across to your male fans as well as the female ones? Well, I think, um, and I'm getting more and more confident in this, I'm actually performing a song today called Ice Cream, which I wrote about, you know, some sexual abuse that I encountered myself. And every time I sing this show live, I end up in floods of tears. And, you know, it's very vulnerable. That's what I'm doing as a songwriter, as an artist, I'm really sharing my stories. And, you know, every time I, I do p play it and perform it, I think men see, you know, what, what, you know, it, it's so hard to explain. It's so tricky to talk about. It's so uncomfortable. That's why music, you know, I'm in love with it because we're able to tell stories and maybe communicate emotions that wouldn't be understood as an anecdote. Yeah. You, you understand? Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Look, it's really good to see you both you so this much. morning. Hope it all goes really well today. I'm sure it will. I'm excited. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hope the weather holds off for you. I'm sure it will. Let's get an update on what is going to happen today from Kirsty. The weather, sponsored by Qatar Airways. People see the Good morning. The overnight rain clearing, and for most of us today, it's a story of sunshine and showers. Now, some of the showers could be heavy in places, the odd rumble of thunder not out of the question. They're moving through fairly quickly on rather brisk westerly winds.
out of the wind today in some shelter in the sunshine we're looking at 8 to 12 celsius that might feel quite pleasant of course not quite so pleasant if you get caught in one of the showers which will be most frequent in the west and maybe a little bit wintry over the scottish hills through the night tonight the daytime showers will tend to fade away a few might persist but most of the showers fading the wind's lighter so a chilly night tonight and maybe a touch of frost Enjoy the sunshine tomorrow morning because we've got wet and windy weather returning from the west. This is going to sweep its way eastwards. Quite heavy rain for parts of Wales. The weather, sponsored by Qatar Airways. Kirsty, thank you. Stay with us. We'll take you through the newspapers in a couple of minutes. Hello, I'm Ellie Bayliss with your Showbiz News, a warning there's some flash photography coming up. Katy Perry says her pregnancy was not an accident. The singer used the music video for her latest song to reveal she's expecting her first. Filmmaker Taika Waititi has signed a deal with Netflix to write, direct and produce two animated series based on the works of Roald Dahl. The streaming giant said the collaboration will be based on the world and characters of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, while the second series would be a wholly original take on the Oompa Loompas. YTT recently won an Oscar for his adapted screenplay Jojo Rabbit. Sir Billy Connolly says his Parkinson's disease diagnosis has put an end to his stand-up career. The 77-year-old comedian was diagnosed with a neurological condition in 2013 and announced his retirement from live performances five years later. Sir Billy gave fans hope last year when he left the door open to a stage return, but the Scotsman's now confirmed his stand-up career is over. I'm finished with stand-up. It was lovely. And it was lovely being good at it. It, it was it's the first thing I was ever good at. The Parkinson has made my brain work differently. And you need a good brain for comedy. Kaiser has released a new single two years after being involved in a car crash that halted her music career. The Canadian star has also confirmed her second album will be released this spring. The 32-year-old was involved in an accident while in an Uber in Toronto in 2017. Time now this morning to take through the newspapers with anthropologist Mariana Hossa and the founder of Challenges Northern Ireland, Thomas Copeland. I don't want you to have smoking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you could see what we, what we do and say in the break. Uh, let's have a look, Marianne, at the Times, Sunday Times, looking at Megan. This was a visit on Friday. She did to a school for International Women's Day. I love this. I love the footage. I love the fact that she connects with these young people in a way that we, we don't often see from the royal family. Yes, and this um, and today um, will be uh, Meghan and Harry's last official royal engagement. They'll be marking um, the Commonwealth Day, but also it's International Women's Day. And so Meghan paid this, um, I mean, obviously it had been planned, but the, the students didn't know that she turned up at school assembly on Friday and addressed them all. <gasps> How cool would that be? And um, she's hugely personable and has that kind of Hollywood glamour and, and charisma. And I think it's probably another reason that, you know, members of the royal family and the people who kind of look after the royal family will be sad that they're leaving because they have such power to connect, like you say, and to make the royal family relevant. Um, but what the, the message that she was bringing to these young people was that um, we all have duty to stand up for rights, to protect other people and to do what's right. So kind of like, you know, basic Miss World stuff, but stuff that is really <laughs> important to be said. Yeah. And when it's coming from someone who is so compelling and so charismatic at a moment that is unexpected, I think it can really make a difference. I, it's, I just keep looking at these pictures of this head boy. Just I mean, going... 
I mean, what? I mean, it's a lovely picture. <laughs> and the fact you could get away with saying, she's beautiful, isn't it? Or whatever she's... Whatever she's I mean, it's just nice, isn't it? I, I've got, a, I've got a, a continuing and inkling feeling that Harry and Meghan won't be going that far away. Uh, in, in the sense that I think... I mean, when the public adores you... I mean, she's like a rock star. She walked yeah. into that place and, you know, these, these, well, these it's children... Well, you say who... that, because, yes, it is... It does come off as a very positive mm. um, experience for all the kids there, but there is so much hatred for her online. It is extraordinary. Well, that's the reason she's, she's going. That's the reason they're going. And, and this was one of the things that she, she talked about. She said, um, uh, you know look after the people in your life and I think for for those looking for that link then what she's saying is you know Harry and I are doing the right thing by our son by our, our family um and that isn't being in the UK exposed to the evil trolling one of the most well, interesting things sorry she said was that you can't she did an interview on TV and said you can't just exist yeah, you have to find ways to thrive mm. rather than survive. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of respect that. Now, I, as, as is always the way, when you sit in a taxi and you have a chat with the driver, you're saying, right, the thing is, it's, it's Megan's fault. Oh, and she's, she's oh, dragging yeah. him away. And it must be terrible for his grandma, must be terrible for his brother. She's ruined. It's her fault. And yeah. I thought, actually, you know, if you're an arch royalist and you're all about the legacy of Princess Diana, he is doing the right thing by the, let's say, the, the principles instilled by his mum, who said, don't be destroyed by things in your life. Find a way to protect those things. <laughs> so it's, it's, credit to them both as a union, as a couple, as a partnership, there's, for doing a, what they think is right. There is an awful misogyny that it's always the woman yeah. that gets blamed. And I, don't, I don't know why that is. Anyway, um, Sunday Telegraph, Thomas. No platforming. Who's having their say? Oh, Mr. Irons. Yeah, Jeremy Irons, who I didn't know is Chancellor of Bath Spa University. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, we were having a conversation about chancellors earlier. That's not really what this story's about. But no, <laughs> uh, Amber Rudd, former, um, former Home Secretary, was invited to an event uh, run by the UN Women's Organisation at Oxford University. And her... Um, her address was cancelled 30 minutes prior to her meant, her, her meant to be speaking. Yeah. And it was an event about encouraging young women to enter politics. And this has kicked up a bit of a fuss because it speaks to a much probably wider, whether you want to call it a problem or not, I don't know, which is this thing called no platforming, which is particularly, um, you know, there's a, a strong narrative about this in universities, but it exists a, a, across society at the moment. Uh, allegedly, the university or the event organisers, I should say, decided not to allow her to speak because of her involvement. In yes, Windrush. specifically not the university. Yeah. Mm. Windrush, yes. The, the university actually apologised uh, 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 subsequently and said that they would have encouraged this kind of conversation going on. I think, you know, I'm universally against no platforming. I think the healthiest thing to ha is to have a conversation. Isn't that so what that, university is all yeah, about? Exactly. All the ideas coming together. So and... that those ideas, if you don't have them out in the open, what happens is they fester on subreddits online where people can, you know, whip themselves into a frenzy of racial hatred or hatred against uh, minorities and that's where it can become really dangerous because then th there are very few outlets for that whereas if you have an open and honest conversation which I don't doubt that the students at a university like Oxford would reserve the right and use it plentifully to to express their dissent at things that Amber Rudd would say then you're having a healthy conversation and it's out in the open <laughs> yeah uh, social media doesn't help in this regard I mean our Twitter feeds are, are essentially specifically designed so that we only ever hear the things that we yeah, want right, to hear. Chambers. And you have to yeah. force yourself sometimes to go, actually, I'm going to watch that video or I'm going to read that article that I know will, will, will say something that I disagree with. Why? Because it's, it's healthy mm. uh, for, for you to be challenged. Yeah, oh, that's an excellent point. I agree wholeheartedly on that, actually. Um, this morning, I think everybody should follow six people they otherwise disagree with on whatever social media platform. Follow me. Well, there you go. You can follow <laughs> me. I'll follow Thomas. Yes, follow <laughs> You're bound to disagree with Thomas on something or other. Um, Mary Ann to the Sunday Mirror and a hero dog. Can I say that? Yes, you can say that. Good. I think yes. it's marvellous. Giving blood. It is blood. a hero dog. Why um, is dog giving blood? Stumpy the Labrador is giving blood to help other dogs. So oh. he's given blood 30 times. And it means that his donations have saved the lives of 120 other dogs who've been ill or in accidents and have needed a blood transfusion. How fabulous is that? Why is he I mean, called why is he Stumpy? Called Stump? what an awful is that name? to do with the blood I... transfusion? No, I think I think he was Stumpy already. Oh, okay. You have to be in good health to be a dog blood donor. But now he's turned nine. He's too old um, because they, they only accept blood from kind of quite young animals. Yeah. Well, young to middle-aged animals. So other dog owners, if your dog is healthy, 
um, and under the age of nine, to the step up. Yeah, Although, obviously, lovely. somebody Great gets story. the benefit, but um, he didn't consent. That's no, the only thing. No. He got biscuits, I'm sure, and cuddles. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, look, just very briefly, in the uh, Sunday People, uh, an eco-hot... This is, this, this is a brilliant story, and it's the kind of thing my mother would go uh, mad over. This is, this is a traveller who was travelling abroad. They were in Fiji, had been texting their family every day to let them know where they were, and then mysteriously uh, didn't text for a week. And um, obviously the family was very concerned and launched an international <laughs> search and rescue <laughs> operation only t for this individual uh, to be found uh, at an eco-retreat in Fiji, <laughs> up a mountain, <clears throat> um, and, and was, 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 was very surprised. Oh, I wonder why anybody was surprised uh, as to where I was when I didn't text for a week when I'm up a mountain in Fiji. Young what people, Thomas. Idiot. I know, what's wrong right. with you? Right. Addicted to your phone until you're up a mountain in Fiji. <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Headlines in a moment.